Hi there, it's Paulie here. We have just come back from a convention. Oh my god, look at the dice. <gasps> Fantastic. I've got all these. They saw me coming. Um, dices and we more dice as all hollowed out with little dragons inside them. And I got I got glitter dice and yeah, because I'm a complete dice hole. But um, made me think. Um, I'm glad something made me think. So I was in the SCA um, in my strange youth. And there was a, a um, like a big, um, the equivalent of the sort of Pensick Wars get together that they have over in the States. They had a similar thing on the eastern coast of Australia, but it was up in um, this weird kind of set of fields somewhere outside of Canberra. So we would drive from Melbourne, you know, many, many hours up to Canberra, do the thing, come back. But we are coming back and um, <laughs> just seeing that bling. Um, yeah, there was in the middle of nowhere, there was like a little tiny whistle stop and it just had like a petrol station. Now, Australia, by the way, what you have to realise is if there's a sign that says no petrol for 300 kilometres, it's sodding means it. It means that there is no human habitation for 300 kilometres. So this was it. In the middle of nowhere, there is a petrol station. For some reason, there is a KFC. I don't know where the people who work at the KFC live. They must like... There must be like a little side road that leads down to some kind of local whistle stop where these people live. But anyway, we pulled in there. It's been a long drive. So we get in and like everyone's like, oh, you've been eight hours in the car. You're a bit stiff. So we walk in and we, <laughs> OK, so we, uh, all right, we put our orders in. I'll order that, that, that and that. And they kind of cause no one, there's no one really turning up there. They, um, they, is there isn't like pre-prepared stuff. They're kind of like pretty much heating it for you you're going to be here about 10 minutes waiting for this stuff to you know come out of the cooker um the driver um a guy called tim um he <laughs> he just uh, looks at the menu and so oh okay look i have one of the chicken cheese and bacon burgers please can i have extra lettuce please and the um the guys behind the counter go kind of silent and said could you say that again please Just, uh, yes, I'll have the chicken, cheese, and bacon burger, please, but I want extra lettuce. Extra lettuce? Certainly, sir. And they just go back behind the counter and come back with you know, a burger box. There you are. It's like, oh, man, we should order the burgers because we're starving. You know, instant service for the burgers. And we've still got to wait 10, 15 minutes for our chicken. So Tim sort of, oh, yeah, he's he's hungry. He's going to open this and start, you know, eating the chips and whatever while he's waiting. And he opens this thing up, just... And goes, get in the car. Get in the fucking car. Get in the fucking car. Now, now, in the car. In the car. Go, fuck it. In the car. And just grabs his... Hey, our chicken. Fuck the chicken. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. Okay, we're like dragged out in the car, jumps in there, and this, this guy's frenziedly trying to turn the car. <laughs> start, start, you can't start. For some reason, it's not starting. What is this? Look, look in the burger packet. Look in the burger packet. And yes, we open this thing up, and this burger packet, it is just, it's full of marijuana. The whole thing is just packed with marijuana. The, you know, it's, it's a drop. And... Tim is, is just so excited. He, when he gets the car going, it was in reverse. He smashed it into the wall of the KFC, shatters his own bunker, his own bumper bar and you know, glass everywhere. And he's like, fuck it. He just floors it. Go, 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 go. We're out of here. He says, We're hungry. He says, Screw that. <laughs> it's like, it's a drop. What? It's a drop. He says, 10 minutes from now, some guy's going to come up and appear and he's like, I need the extra lettuce. And it's like, what? Well, we just gave it to you. So, uh, yes, yes, driving out of um, uh, the SCA, still hungry, but um, oh well, <laughs> at least Tim had like about four kilos of sodding Mary Jane on him. Uh, um, yes, we insisted he drop us off. Um, I had been doing a lot of armor making. Um, I love, you know, I'm an armor Nazi, I adore armor, I'm an armor historian, that's actually my specific thing. I would make Japanese samurai armors for people. Um, had a set pattern for doing the very simple ones made from strips rather than individual um, lames, you know, so we could turn those out, put these shikoro, these long strips, so I could turn to you and say, you know, basically, are you a small, medium or large? What base color do you want these in? Because we can do them in black and, and then you can lace them in interesting colors. Or we can do them in a base red, which is a very common one. Or we could do like um, gold or russet. So we could do all the basic colors and then, you know, we would 
and I would assemble these things on mannequins. I had a whole bunch of crap mannequins that I'd gotten from various places. So I would take these up to these um, um, big weekends and set the mannequins up with armor on them to basically show people these are the different types and sets and styles. And this is what, you know, I wasn't really charging people for this because, you know, we were a community. So, so, but I'll show you if you need it. This is what we can do. And um, to fit them in the car afterwards, you would unscrew the arms and the legs and the heads and kind of fit them in the back of the car and put a tarp over them. So, yes, I am um, driving back in the and it's gotten to nightfall by the time I get to the city. And for some reason, the cops pull me over. I know I was driving just fine. We pull over and the, excuse me. We want to check the back of the car, please. What have you got in the back of the car? It's like, I have a dozen dismem dismembered bodies, officer. Yeah. Funny man. Funny man. Could you, could you, you know, open the trunk? Absolutely. I open the back of the car and, um, yeah, out fall, out fall some arms and legs. Bang, 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 bang. And so, hmm. Oh, um, you actually did have, um, yes, I did. Like I said, I have, I have several severed arms and legs inside the, uh, the car officer. Um, ha! Ah, ha, ha, ha. There were these big bags there. Now, these bags are the laundry from a group of people who have been fighting in armour for like four days. These are their sweat, sodden, unspeakable clothing, which has just been thrown into green garbage bags and tied off. No one's going to touch that. I'm going to get that home. And then I'm going to basically, um, I'm going to put on gloves and full masks and goggles and somehow get those into a washing machine and try and leave the laundry alive while that just washes. Um... So, um, ha, what's in the bag? Says, ah, oh, it's unspeakable laundry. I, I really wouldn't open that. And they ha, 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 we'll be the judge of that. And they they basically wrench these bags open and it's just this filthy gym locker stench just you know, <laughs> thundering into the, their uh, their faces. So it's like, I, I don't know why, I don't know why police wouldn't listen to me. They should have just gone after Tim. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I think Tim flew home after that one. Anyway, wee SCA days.